Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, yes, good morning, yes, good morning, yes, good morning. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, Dave. We're thankful, thanks be to God, we're in his house just one more one time. More one more time. Woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Yes, yes, sir. Thanks be to him, we are in his house to mm. give him some praise. Amen. Yes, sir. We ask that you help us lift up the name of the well, Lord this morning through yes, song, sir. prayer, and scripture. Mm. It's just Sunday school, so we just going to just tip the iceberg just a little bit. Just Amen. Little bit, Amen. Yes, Amen. Jesus is on, he's on the main line. Somebody tell him what you want to order, Lord, if Jesus is on, he's on the main line. Somebody tell him what you want to what you want now. Lord, if Jesus is on, he's on the main line. Why don't you tell him what you want to are you just call him up and tell him what you uh, want? If you want your soul say You need to tell him what you want. Lord, if you want your soul say Why don't you tell him what you want? Tell him what you want. Lord, if you want. Your soul say you ought to tell him what you want. Or you just call him up and tell him what you want. If you want more power, somebody ought to tell him what you want. Oh, if you want more power, somebody. Tell him what you want. Tell him what you oh, want now. If you want more power, somebody ought to tell him what you want. Uh, you just, just call him up and tell him what you want. Jesus is on, on the main line. Tell him what you want oh jesus is on he's on the main line you are to tell him what you tell him what you want lord, lord jesus is on he's on the main line somebody tell him what you want are you just call him up and tell him, him what, what you call Jesus. Somebody ought to call Jesus. Why don't you just tell him what you want? Oh, call Jesus. Somebody call Jesus. Somebody tell him what you want. Tell him what you want now. Call Jesus. Somebody call Jesus. Why don't you tell, tell him what you want? Or you just, just call him up and tell him what you want. Amen. Now we have scripture by Brother Rod Roderick Gaines. <clears throat> oh, yes. Romans 34, 3 and 4, 4 and 3. Abraham believed God, and he, and it was continued unto him for his righteousness. It was God's word. I will trust mm -hmm. in, in the, the Lord. Lord. I will trust in the, the Lord. Lord. I will trust Father God, the great creator, the one who made the heavens and the earth, and then you made everything therein, Father God, the one who has all power, the one who sits high and looks low, Father God, we come before you as humble as we know how this morning, thanking you for being God and God all by yourself, Father God. Father God, you woke us up when you touched us with a finger of love and opened our eyes, Father God, to a day that we'll never see again. And we stop this morning to say we thank you. 
because it was nothing but your, your throne of grace and mercy that allowed us, Father God, to get up, Father God, with health and strength this morning, Father God. Nobody but you, Father God, allowed it. So we stopped this morning to say we thank you, Father God, for giving us life, Father God, because you woke us up this morning. Stop right there and just say we thank you, Father God. And Father God, not only you woke us up, Father God, but you allowed us to get up and have some food on the table, clothing on our back, and had the air blowing and water running, Father God. And we stopped to say we thank you this morning, Father God. Nobody but you, Father God. Nobody but you that kept us, Father God. You gave us comfort when we needed it, Father God. You healed us, Father God, when we were sick, Father God. And we're undeserving of all of this, Father God. But you, you found favor, Father God, in us, Father God. And we stopped to say we thank you because it was nothing we did, Father God, on the job, Father God, or how many points we accumulated or how good our credit score may be, Father God. But it was nobody but you, Father God, the one who has all power, Father God. Father God, we ask you to come in your house this morning. We know that you're here, Father God, but we ask you to touch the, to the crown of our head of our, of our, our pastor, Father God, to the sole of his feet, Father God. Bless him in a mighty way, Father God. Keep his wife and keep him, Father God. Bless them, Father God. Then, Father God, we ask you to bless all the deacons, Father God, the ministers, Father God, everyone that's going to be here and tuned into your word, Father God. Bless them in a mighty way, Father God. Bless all the teachers. Bless all the students this morning, Father God. Father God. Then, Father God, if you don't do nothing else, you've already done enough. But we ask, Father God, if it be in your will, speak through us, Father God. Speak through us through your word, Father God, through your Sunday school lesson this morning. Father God, we're seeking assurance, Father God, and we need you, Father God. Father God, give us strength wherever we're weak. Build us up wherever we've been torn down, Father God. Father God, we know we've done something on the job where we may have talked to somebody the wrong way. Friday up our nose, Father God. Father God, go into our hearts, Father God, and then remove whatever's blocking us from receiving you this morning, Father God, and then renew the right spirit in us, Father God. Father God, bless the man that's going to come and bring this morning's manner, Father God. Bless everyone that's tuned in on the social media airwaves, the ones that are physically here, Father God, and then bless the ones that couldn't be here for whatever stricken reason, Father God. You know all, Father God. Father God, and ultimately you're above all, Father God, but you have all power, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for the revival this week, Father God. We thank you for just letting us come together and be revived one more time, Father God. We thank you, Father God, because this is in Jesus' name we ask, Father God. It's in Jesus' name the reason why we're here, Father God. It's in Jesus' name the reason why we have this opportunity today. So we say we thank you for your son who died but yet still lives. Father God, we ask you to bless this Sunday school hour right now like only you can. Move, Father God. Let your spirit move in us, Father God. Father God, keep us, Father God, and let us be servants of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and asking all these things. Amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Come on. I'm going to see God for myself when I die. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. 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 We thank you for taking part in Sunday school devotion. We ask that you help us lift up the name of the Lord and just go a little bit more higher. Now, what we'll our pastor this morning come and bring us our morning manner. Why don't you give him a warm welcome, a hand of praise as he comes. Right? We have, the, we have a great pastor. Amen. Amen. Bless you, son. To God be the glory for the things he has done. He has done great things for us. We all can say hallelujah. hallelujah and thank you, Lord, for saving me. To the officers and to the ministers and to our superintendent, Deacon Moore, at his uh, absence and to our assistant, uh, Superintendent Deacon Kirkland, to each of you, my father's children, you that are on Facebook, we certainly welcome you. We thank you for sharing this time. And you on conference call, we thank you for allowing us this moment uh, in the teaching of the word of God. We encourage you to invite your children to get on the children's class, uh, Google, I believe it's called, it's on your screen, please. The youth, please join your classes at 10 o'clock a.m. We have some dynamic, good teachers 
that are ready to impart the word of God to the children and to the youth. Don't allow this pandemic to stop you from doing your parental duty, which is to instruct your children. Amen. Sometimes you got to wake them up. Sometimes you have to stir them up and encourage them that if they are not going to be here in the physical church, at least they can be online in the media church. They can be involved in training and involved in the study of the word of God. I'm here to tell you God's word will carry you through this pandemic. Not only adults, but also our children and our youth. So please encourage your youth and your children to be a part of their class at 10 o'clock this morning. Call your friends, wake them up, let them know friendship is online right now and ready to talk about the word of God on Facebook and on conference call. Uh, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll go into the teaching. Master, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity, this privilege and opportunity. Thank you, Master, for just being who you are. You are an awesome God. We pray now that you will let your word speak to us and through us. Use us, God, as an instrument of honor that your people will be edified and your name will be magnified. Open blinded eyes today. Touch us and empower us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Again, dynamic lesson on tonight especially for times like these. Um, it is our lesson three for July 18th, entitled Seeking Assurance. And it covers Romans 4, verses 1 through 12. And I need a couple of readers um, and so if you'd like to be a reader, please, Brother uh, Deacon, get somebody the microphone when I call for it. Amen. Amen. I'm uh, looking at this lesson, uh, Seeking Assurance, because it, it, it deals so much with the problematic world in which we live in, an un certain time, a time where you can be asleep in your bed and your whole house can come crashing down on you, a time where your house can be swept up by, by, by torrential rains that have caused lakes and rivers to overflow and come racing through the city and before you can even uh, find safety, you wind up in the dangerous situation. This is a life of uncertainty. We don't know, according to Fox News, some people don't even know who's the president of the United States. They are they're unsure because they've been fed lies. There are some people that don't know whether there are still prejudice or whether there is prejudice in the world. And so most of the persons that look like you and I, we don't know if we're going to even have a neighbor that hates us. We don't know if we have a, a friend that we now have to begin to watch. Everything is unsure. Life is filled with uncertainty. You can go to the doctor. Happy, you can go to the jock doctor, and all of a sudden there's a great turnaround because something has jumped up in your life, in your physical body that cannot be reversed by medicine. But, but I'm here to tell you, you can find assurance for things in this life 
and most certainly for things for eternal life. This, this lesson helps us on the proper track. It, it puts us in the proper frame of mind as to how we are saved and why we are saved and what transpires because we've been saved. And you know, when you have the assurance that you are saved, you don't worry about the little things in life. You don't, you don't trip out because of, 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 of certain uh, events that popped up out of, you know, you think out of nowhere. You, most most time, when you forget who saved you and how you're saved, you, you can even get tripped up because you keep messing up. You keep stumbling. You keep getting caught up. We read a passage uh, this morning in, in the Psalms of 92 that says, presumptuous sins get us tripped up. We get caught up sometimes because we just assume that God going to forgive us, that God going to do it. No, you, you need to understand you have the assurance not to sin willfully, but because of the assurance you have, you have now the assurance to not sin and the power to not be a sinner, a practicing Center. This lesson, Paul had to talk to some Gentiles. He had to talk to a group of people that kind of uh, were bringing in the idea that you needed to be circumcised. But, but, but Paul is making sure that the Gentiles have the same premise that the Old Testament prophets had since Abraham. See, see the Jews were stuck on Abraham. They were, they were stuck on their Hebrew lineage. They were stuck with the fact that they were the chosen, privileged children of God. But, 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 but Paul is helping us understand that to have a relationship with God is predicated not on your heritage, but on your faith. You are just, I'm justified. We justify by faith. Now, now you got to notice that chapters one through three, Paul dealt with the doctrine of justification. Of, he, he, he dealt with what it means to be Justified what it what it means the 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 idea that first of all you a sinner I am a sinner men are sinner you saw that in Romans three that all have sinned and come short of everybody is a sinner I don't care what you think and because we are sinners we need a way out from our sin problem our sin bondages and brothers and sisters don't ever believe. You don't have to handle and deal with sin. You can be as saved as you want to. Sin still prevalent. Sin is waiting and chopping at your heels. It's constantly calling you back into your realm of powerlessness. And so the Jews said circumcision authorizes our relationship with God. Paul says no. It's not the circumcision, but it is the circumcision of the heart. Not the physical, but it's of the heart. It is that which is the true sign of relationship, that you've really been justified by faith. Jews uh, found the idea, if they stuck with Abraham, if they just held on to that truth. Well, Paul says, listen, even Abraham was justified by faith. See, y'all so stuck on your bloodline, you missing the truth of who you really are. 
uh, 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 someone give me uh, Romans. Thank you. That read verses one through five if you could. Amen. Uh, Pastor uh, Romans four one through five, and it reads, "What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith?" The scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, hmm. but believe on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Thank you. Man, let me tell you something. He's letting them know it ain't your bloodline. It's not who your mama was or your daddy was. And that's, that's good news because somebody's mama and daddy was showing sure up outright devils. I don't care if your daddy raped you. I don't care if your mama pimped you. I don't care what your bloodline was. You can be saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. The faith is in Christ Jesus. Paul says, there is no way you can boast upon Abraham because to boast on your Abrahamic uh, relationship suggests you've worked your way to be right with God. And I don't know if you know this or not, but no man can work enough to be saved. You, you can't do enough to pay a debt that's too deep. You, 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 we're in a hole that cannot be gotten out of easily. No, no, no. It took Jesus going to the cross. Wait, before I say that. It took God becoming man to go to the cross to dig you and I out of the grave of sin. So we can't work Enough. I don't care if you pay the most. I don't care if you talk the most, preach the best, sing the greatest. I don't care if you love everybody. You still cannot work to be saved. Self-righteousness will get you placed in hell, but it will not get you put in the glory. It won't put you in a right relationship. The idea of, uh, of, of Abraham, of Paul telling Abraham... It was that he was saved by grace. It, he was saved before he was circumcised. He was saved before the sign of circumcision. It, it, see, the sign, the clothes you wear, the, 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 the things you do don't mean nothing. You're still an enemy of God, still angry with God. The reason Judas went to hell was because he did not believe Jesus would forgive him. He did not believe that Jesus could forgive him. I don't know if you've ever been there when you thought you've done so much dirt. You've been so low down. You, you've been so wrong that you didn't believe. You might be on Facebook. You might not believe that Jesus can forgive you. You might have think you've done some things so low down so mean, but I'm here to tell you, you the kind of person that God died for. You're the very one that God wants to set free. It's by your faith in him that he'll save you, not by your works. See, don't put the cart before the horse. You got to first be saved. Amen. Before you began to be renewed, regenerated, change your ways, God saves you. And I, and I got to say this kind of off the lesson, but God don't save you and leave you like you are. I, I should have had some shout, folks shout right there. When God saves you, he begins that process of sanctification. He begins to change you. Am I right about it? But it ain't the change that keeps you saved. No, no, no. It's not what you do. 
but it's who you believe saves you. No, no, no. Works cannot be justified. No, no, no. Works cannot save you. The idea, in fact, let me say it like this. The idea that uh, uh, God counted uh, you saved or Abraham saved by his faith was a, was a, a, a financial term. It had to do with God counting and putting into your account something that said you were worth going to glory. He put something in your bank account in heaven that said you are worth being saved. Now, this word of the bank account, the resources for the bank account can be looked at from two ways. You can work and earn wages and put it in a bank account or you can receive an inheritance and put it in a bank account. You will rejoice more for that which was given to you without work. Well, that's the word that Paul is using. He's not using a word that says you put stuff in your account that make you worthy. You, 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 you've added stuff. Y'all remember them dollar a day Christmas accounts we used to have? But, but now they won't way up more than that. What, what Paul is saying, God is the one who put the inheritance in your account. And that's, and I, 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 somebody said, thank you, Lord. That's, I thank God, that's what I'm banking on. It's not what we put in the account. It's not what my mama added to my account. But it's what God has placed in your account. And you ought to be grateful that God is watching over your account. And he is the one who is adding to your glorious account. Because you and I cannot. That, that, that makes me good. In fact, the word is actually grace. When you think about it, it's a word that says you don't deserve it, but yet he's putting it in there. You aren't worthy of it, but yet he's putting it in there. You are guilty of damnation, but he's putting this in your account. Why? Simply because of faith. Your assurance, our assurance, my assurance is based, the reason I'm going to heaven, not because I'm the pastor. Not because I'm a preacher. Not because I'm a teacher. Not because I like people. Not because I don't do this, I don't do that. The reason I'm going to glory, simply, surely, purely, completely, is because of him. I believe that Jesus Christ has made a way, and I have that assurance. I don't fall out, go crazy, because my assurance is Christ has paid the cost, satisfied the debt. You, you ought to be glad about that. You on Facebook, you conference call, you ought to shout about that. Because you have the assurance. I don't care what the doctors tell you. I've got the assurance that if, if, I, if, if he wants to heal me, he can. I don't care what the banker says. If God wants to feed me, he can. I don't care what nobody says. If God wants to supply me, he can. I have that assurance. Not only in the life to come, but I got insurance on this side. God has blessed us and gave us the confidence that this ain't all there is. Not only did Paul talk about uh, 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 Abraham because they bragged and they boasted on their line, but Paul start talking about David. That's verses 6 through 8. Someone please. Thank you, Sister Williams. 6 through 8? Yes. Even as David as also described it, the blessings of the man who, unto whom God imputed mm -hmm. right, saying, blessed the 
are they that iniquities iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered blessed is the man to whom the lord will put <laughs> will not impute sin <laughs> yes sir thank you yes sir yes sir blessed is the man listen abraham was known to them as a decent man abraham he done some devious things but to them, Abraham was a nice kind of guy. Abraham was a, was a guy who, who life, who they could try to mirror, you know, mimic. It was somebody who they looked up to, sure. But, but then Paul went to David. Paul, Paul went to David because they also held David in high esteem. But David's life wasn't always so, so, so pure. David's life wasn't always so holy. David had a bad history. David had a stumble or two. David had a problem. David had a low down issue. David had a time where he snuck off. My daddy always said he always he had reckless eyeballs, and he wound up landing in somebody else's rooftop while his wife was taking a bath, got her, murdered her husband, and had a baby by her. He had he was a bad guy, but he said God. David, Paul is making us understand. Paul saying, David is reminding us, even God forgives the guilty, the low down, the mean, the worthless, those who don't deserve nothing but damnation, death, and destruction. Those who are guilty, been found guilty, been charged guilty, those who wear the mantle of guilt. He's, he's saying even they, hallelujah, can be saved. Their assurance, yes. and, and, and you know I, I've discovered, the more someone has been forgiven, the more they love the Lord. Yes, you, you know, the more God have done for them. I, I, I don't ever want to be a simple sinner. I don't ever want to think I was barely one who was tiptoeing on death's line. I was barely one who God didn't have to reach way down the bottom. I, I, I don't ever want to think when God got me, he just got the very cream of the crop. I want to understand when God got me, he sure enough had to reach to the bottom of the barrel of the garbage. And when he reached down, he got one of the words. I understand that. And because I understand it, I'm standing on that one solid truth. I have the assurance, not because I've been changed, but because my faith is in Christ Jesus. Paul, Paul wanted to reinforce this logic that justification is by faith. And faith alone, nothing else. That word means by itself. Nothing else. You can't add nothing you can't take nothing away, but it's purely by faith. I, I, I like the fact of David when he wrote Psalms 32 and, and, and 1. David, this is with, even before Psalms 51. David, David was saying, thank God that God does not charge a man for his sins. Thank God that God didn't charge me for my iniquities. And he, David said that because God turned his life around. And no matter what you're in today, no matter how deep you're in it, no matter how, no matter how long you've been in it, God wants to give you the blessed assurance. Why go through life playing like you don't have another, another life to come. Why go through life in misery, drinking yourself blind, drugging yourself blind, and trying to hurt yourself uh, by doing things to destroy yourself? God wants to give you the assurance right today. He wants to put some joy in your life. And when you trust in this assurance, you won't so easily dip into your sin. You may stumble. Sometimes we will stumble. But you won't stay in your sin. 
God wants to set you free. And all it takes is a matter of just believing that his death, amen, covers your, he, he won't even, watch this, he won't, he won't, he won't charge you for your sin. Uh, uh, the old Neil brothers sang that song, Jesus dropped the charges. You remember them two big boys? Jesus dropped the charges. He took all my sins and carried them away. He'll do that for you. He won't charge you for the low down things you used to do. He won't mess you up. I, I also like Psalm 103, line 12, and it says, as far as the east is from the west, will he forget your sins? He'll put them in a sea of forgetfulness. Remember the old folk used to pray like that? The old deacon said, Lord, cast my sins into the sea of forgetfulness where you will never remember them no more. Well, he says, as far as the east is from the west, he will not remember your sins. And, and that's a great idea about location, about dimension, about space and time. Because if he said north to south, then eventually your sin going to come back. Because if you go from the north pole to the south pole, you're going south. But once you hit the south pole and start coming up north, you're going north. But as you're going from the east, to the west, as far as you go to the east, you'll always be going east. And as far as you go to the west, you'll always be going to the west. The Lord is saying, as far apart as the east is from the west, hey, he won't remember what you used to do in the dark. He won't remember what you used to say behind closed doors. He's got you covered. Whoa! Somebody should have said, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's got you covered. Amen. Amen. That's good news. Thank you, Lord, that you've covered. David says, I was showed up a sinner. But that 51st Psalm said, he restored my, he cleansed me. He, he purged me. He cleaned me up. Now, as vicious as he was. But he could say conversations like that. As ruthless as he was. But he could have the confidence like that. He knew that God did it. He was satisfied. He had his whole heart resting on the fact that he knew God cleaned him up. He believed the word of God when God said I will forgive your sin. He believed that and brothers and sisters it takes faith. It, it takes faith. You got to have faith because sometimes we, we get weak and we believe ain't no way he forgave me for that. Yeah. Amen. You ever, you ever been riding in your car and think about how far God brought you from? You ever you ever been riding in your car and you just remember a certain something you did and you forgot about? You ever been driving and you say, oh, goodness, how did I ever, how, how, why did I ever do? You ever, you ever been there? And then when you realize that that was a bad past uh, life you had, but then you found yourself rejoicing. Because even as dark and damnable as that was, you believe he forgave you. That's a, that's a good God. Thank you, Lord, that no matter what it was, you forgave me. God bless you. Verse number 9 through 12, please, Reverend. Pastor Class, cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the circumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision? or in uncircumcision, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith which he had yet been uncircumcised, 
that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them mm. also. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in steps of that faith of their father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Amen. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> not only was uh, Abraham the Jews or David the king, but he brings this all the way down to the Gentiles, the worst. The problem most sinners have is that folk in the church won't accept them, help them, or even believe God can save them. The church, we suffer from that disease where we think only that God can only save us because we wasn't as bad as somebody else was. We have the, the push-out mentality, and we run folk out because they don't look like us, dress like us, talk like us. And sometimes they have a problem with the things they drink. Sometimes they have a problem with how they smell, with the smoke they smoke. Sometimes they have a problem with coming in a certain way and leaving out the same way. But, but the idea here is that no matter who you are, no matter how mean, how low down you are, they are what we were. No matter what this condition is, God wants to save them. The, the unique part about John 3.16 is that he came to save the whole wide world. His blood didn't stop just for those who are saved today. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm here to tell you today, his blood just didn't stop at you and I, but it's for everyone, everyone, the uncircumcised and <clears throat> the circumcised. Do I have a witness here? He received the sign of circumcision, amen, and a seal of righteousness of faith. See, our, our, our sign is not physical, but it's spiritual. And our seal suggests ownership. The seal suggests special person. When you saw the king's signet put upon a document or placed upon a tomb or, or put somewhere in writing, it suggested a higher authority than common could be dealing with what's behind this closed document, what's behind this closed seal. It suggests something was special and something was unique. Something meant something to the king who put the sign. Well, you and I have the seal of our faith. And the, 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 the sign of our faith and the seal of the Holy Spirit. We've been sealed to the day of redemption. God has so positioned us. Amen. God has so placed us that even as uh, believers, it's not because of who we are. He's placed us in a position in spite of who we are. That's, man, that's, that's good news to me because there's no way in the world you can tell me we should be saved. We deserve to be saved. I know I don't, but I'm here to tell you, you don't either. If you are in the family of God, it's because he saved you. If you are unsaved, don't die like that. You don't have to die like that. God wants to save you. He wants to seal you to the day of redemption. And you can have this assurance, this blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. 
Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation, purchased by God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. You and I have that blessed assurance, and we ought not sit on our blessed assurance. We ought to go and tell somebody, spread the good news, let them know that they too can have the same assurance. It's not by the money you give. Tell them it's free. It's not by the deeds you do. Tell them God's paid for that. Tell them their sins can be forgiven because of the assurance that Christ Jesus paid it all. And he did pay it all. And all to him we owe. Oh, yes, sin had left, left a, a, a crimson stain, but Jesus, blood washed it white as snow. Will you be the part of that family? A part of that family of God that can have the blessed assurance. Paul made us understand. I'm closing with this. Paul made us understand in just these 12 verses. From verse 1 in the idea of Abraham. From verses 1 to 5. And then 6 to 8, the idea of David. And then from 9 to 12, the idea of the Gentiles. The uncircumcised. Listen. Even from the beginning of time to the end of time. They were all saved by faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things. You, 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 you've, you've read it. Let me, let me tell you this. Abraham obeyed God. And God counted that for righteousness. So faith and obedience must run hand in hand. You believe, and because you believe, you obey. There were some of us that grew up as kids. We learned from what we saw. I grew up with seven brothers. Most of us learn to obey mom and dad at a young age. But some of us didn't learn at the right age. That obey, obedience and that obey. Papa said, if you obey, I won't beat you. That's, that's what he said. If you obey, I won't try to take the life out of you. And I learned at a young age, I didn't want no beating. So I tried to o obey. Amen? But there are some that don't want to obey. And because you won't obey, God has to beat you. And I'm just asking you now, if you will accept Christ Jesus, if you want this blessed assurance, once you accept him, you will become obedient. The reason I'm saying this is because I don't want to give this false notion that all you have to do is say you obey, but then you walk away and do your own thing. When you obey, when you accept Christ by faith, you start moving in another direction. You start acting a whole other way. And I know that's why some people don't want to obey. Some folk like sin. Some folk want to stay where they are. But I'm here to tell you there's a greater joy. L listen, there's a higher height that you've never tasted even with crack cocaine. There's a higher height you've never experienced, even with all them pills you've taken. There's a greater joy than smoking weeds. Oh, yes, there is. There's a greater feeling if you will just have Christ as your Lord and Savior. That assurance that I ain't got to go to hell. Yes, but that assurance that I'm a friend of God. And God 
is no longer angry with me. Brothers and sisters, if I were you, I would come on the side and have blessed assurance as opposed to a damnable mind for my future. God bless you, and may God keep you. We're going to close in a prayer. Father, we thank you for all that you've done on today. We ask now for forgiveness of all of our sins, and we thank you for the blessed assurance that you have saved us. You, oh God, have washed us. Thank you, God, that we understand it's not by works, but it's by our faith. And we thank you, God, that we might not work to be saved, but because we are saved, we're going to work. We pray, God, you will bless us and inspire us to do all we can because we are saved. Not to stay saved, but just because we are saved. Let it be the reaction of our salvation. Thank you, Master. And all you've done, thank you. You've been so good to us. We give you glory, honor. We give you the praise. And we shout the victory in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you again for Facebook conference call. We appreciate you. We pray God's speed. Come back with us at 1045. And let's celebrate the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you wait uh, to 1045, we're going to open the door of the church and give you the opportunity of a lifetime that you will become a child of the living God. God bless you, and may God keep you, and we'll see you shortly. We love you. Bye-bye.